Would you like to please join me in the pledge to the flag? Next up, we will be taking comments from the audience regarding agenda items. We would ask that when you come to the microphone that you, uh, we may limit your comments to five minutes. And we ask that you state your name and address for the record. Would anyone like to address the board this evening? Come on forward and there's the microphone. State your name and address for the record, please. Thank you. Yes, I'm Joseph Allen. Address is 11328 West Godsell, directly in front of Hales Corners Elementary School. Um, I apologize, but I was not at the last meeting. I had to work. So I'm trying to catch up on a few things. Is there a uh, an understanding of where or what we're looking for for Hales Corners Elementary at this time. In regards to the response from the survey, are they looking at bringing it over to the middle school out of Hales Corners, or is it going to stay in the current we'll location? We'll have that discussion later on in this agenda. Okay. So this is your chance to tell us how you feel about it. So when we deliberate, you want my we, selfish yes, answer? We want. No, we want your broad. Okay. Like what's best for the kids? No, tell us what you feel. How you feel. I'll double edge that. Okay. Uh, as some people do know, I grew up in this area. I own the house I grew up in on God's Hill. So I went to Hills Corners Elementary, to the middle school, to the high school here. Um, looking back, I think it would be a horrible idea to put any elementary school kid near the middle schoolers, especially in this day and age. My kids are exposed to way too much way too early, along with everybody else's kids. Middle schoolers are coming of age, they're becoming teenagers, and they influence younger kids a lot easier. I will share with you that's not on the, we're not talking about that option anymore, correct? That's not an option that's anymore. We're gonna, that's not that was, we forward. took that off the, the table at the we last meeting. The table. We took it off the table, so you're Then you get a smile from me. Okay, <laughs> thank you. There we go, let's hear it. <laughs> there it is, I, I'm right. happy as can be. I'll tell all my neighbors Three. who were upset last week, yes, that's who were confused enough. and no, we heard we'll from pass the it along. And the board said, let's look at either a new school or a renovated school on that same site. Well, so then. You can speak to us about that. This meeting's adjourned. Thank you. Sounds like you would Okay, would anyone else like to address the board? Come on forward. Hello there. Hi. Hi. My name is Joan Hansen. Do you want my address? Yes, please. 6418 South 122nd Street. My husband and I have been residents at the same address for the last 38 years. We have never had children in this school because we don't have children. And if we did, they would be in parochial school because that's the way we were raised. But we've paid here for 38 years, and it is very expensive. Now, I just happen to think, on our block, how many people are retired? And out of 14 homes, six of those homes are occupied by people who are retired. So I said, well, I'll go one block over because I know some of the people there. And on that block, I found five out of 12, and there may be more. Now, we all want a good school for the kids. If you need to have a renovation done, and it's absolutely necessary, do it. But don't go out and build big plans for people who can't afford any more tax increases because our taxes are way too high now. In fact, I filled out one of your things when I sent it in, and I said, did you people miss something? The governor ran and said he won, and he was going to reduce property taxes. And I asked, are you all asleep? That you want to go and raise these kind of dollars? Well, I could see that. And I have some questions. How many children who attend this school live in this district? I would like to have that information. I don't see that. And how many people were, how many children were in this school, Hales Corners Elementary, 12 years ago? And how many do you anticipate will be in here in the next, when 12 years hence has come? So are you overbuilding? Do you need it? And how old is this school, by the way? I know it was in the survey, but I don't remember. We will get those answers back to you. Well, can you tell me how old the school is? What are you saying? Uh, Matt, it is. 45? We're gonna, like I said, we're going to have that deliberation later. 
but we'll get we'll answer those questions if okay. we don't have quick answers now. Well, I was just going to say many of the homes where I live in Hale Park are probably older than this school district is. The school building, and probably I assume the school building has been kept in pretty good shape. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. So, uh, who else would like to address the board? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Thank you. I'm Kelly Farrell Huber. I live at 10343 West Bunzel Avenue. <coughs> Sorry, I'm losing my voice here. Um, I sort of have a unique perspective because I was a teacher for 17 years and my child attends Hales Corners Elementary. Um, and then obviously I'm also a taxpayer as well because I live in the community. Um, one thing that is very certain, I've given lots of tests over the years and the ability to concentrate and learn is extremely important. So I volunteer at Hales Corners Elementary quite regularly. It's very warm. Um, the conditions I don't consider optimal for learning based on my years of experience. And I think for taxpayers, um, for all of us, you know, the things that bring people to this community and keep our property values high and property values solid is Whitnell School District. It's that reputation for learning. It's that high standard. And, you know, I don't think anyone in this community expects you know, the best and the latest facilities. We just want an environment where our children are able to learn and really optimize their learning experience. So um, as far as putting this with other items for referendum, I just wanted to express that I'm not for that just because I think it's really important for us to get this rep referendum passed for new school building for Hales Corners Elementary. So I would very much be in favor of that being its own item on the ballot. All right, thank you. All right. I want to mention for the public's sake, I'm, I should have maybe clarified this. There are really two meetings tonight because in December we combined two. This first one is our committee of the whole meeting. And we, we did put another, and then the board is going to deliberate toward the end of this meeting um, on, on the proposals. And then we will actually adjourn and go into another meeting. And at that point, you can, dis you can come forward again, and then we'll make sure we answer all of your questions. And then if you have more comments, uh, you can come back at a second time tonight. So we're really trying to hear what you have to say and answer your questions as you <coughs> move forward. So I should have clarified that before we started. OK, someone over here. Come on. Come on up. My name is Kelly Lynch, uh, 11020 West Dennis Avenue. My husband and I looked at buying a house about eight years ago, and we specifically looked at the Whitnell School District. We knew that the Whitnell School District was um, where we wanted to be able to send our kids when we had kids. Uh, we knew that the taxes were high, but we also knew that it was worth it to be in this community, to be in this school district. So I know a lot of people are concerned about what this is going to do to property taxes, but I kind of expected that going in. Uh, I'm happy to pay a little bit more in my taxes to be at a school where I know that my child is getting the best education possible and is in a facility that she can get around in. My daughter is in special ed. She has limited mobility. Uh, she has an aid, but they really struggle to get her around the school. For her to go up a flight of stairs, to go down a flight of stairs, to get to the classroom that she needs to be in for therapy is exhausting for her. My daughter takes a nap every day at school because she is exhausted. I think if you're gonna put the money into doing something to the school, whether it be renovating or building new, <coughs> there's such a minimal cost difference between the two options, build a new school. Build it the way that we want it for our kids to be able to get around and get a good education without being distracted by not having air conditioning in a room, or not having f proper heating in a room. Uh, the other thing is for children to get a good education, as somebody else already mentioned, Kids need to be able to focus. If you're gonna be renovating the building during school and things are gonna be moved, things are gonna be different, it's very distracting for the kids. To be able to just build a new building, I think personally, is the best option. Uh, I also think that it's very important on the referendum to have the two items separate. Thank right, you. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else like to address the board? Come on up. Uh, 
My name is Amy Bathke, and my address is 4836 South 95th Street. Uh, I was at the meeting last week and was very pleased by the survey results that there was a lot of support in the district for the various projects we're looking at. I wanted to speak to um, what some have mentioned about bundling the projects together. Uh, I do fear that if the various projects, whether it be new building renovation, pool, weight room, if things are bundled together, I think it will really turn taxpayers off if it's an all or nothing proposition and they will say, if you're saying it's all or nothing, I'm gonna say nothing. And I think we need to, I think it was Brian from School Perceptions who recommended we look at it as a homeowner who looks at prioritizing different projects that they need to do at their home. Can't do it all at one time. Let's see what we need to do first, what ha absolutely has to be done. Um, so I recommend that maybe we look at it that way rather than say, let's throw it all together and see what we can pass. Why don't we give the taxpayers some more options than that and see if we can really get done what needs to be done, which in my opinion is a new school at Hills Corners Elementary <laughs> where my kids go. But to be honest, from what I found out last week, my kids won't even be at the school when the new building is done. But I think it is such a great need with um, the age of the building, which I believe was originally built in 1948. There was a question from before. Um, and the environment, the ups to go down, everything that um, uh, other people have said, I just think that is the priority in the district right now. Thank you. Would anyone else like to address the board tonight? Please come forward. <clears throat> Yes, you may come together. <laughs> <laughs> I just need your name and addresses for the record. Um, okay, Julia Lucy Arnenberg, 5500 South Meadow Park Court. Um, Alexandra Pantala, 4584 South River Ridge Boulevard. Sarah Hill, 12101 West Holmes Avenue. Go ahead. Um, so, us three girls, we are members of the swim team. We go to Whitnall, obviously. And we personally, we believe that the pool is something that needs to be done. We have swam in this pool for many years. And over the years, um, we've just noticed lots of problems and issues that have come up and it's made it harder on us as swimmers to do our best and perform and meet the standards that we need to meet in order to grow and become successful. As a swim team, uh, we've noticed from having our names on the wall and as conference champs, as sectionals champs before, uh, that doesn't really happen that much anymore. <coughs> our records, um, our pool records have been last set in the 90s, 98s, early 2000s, and this also could be a possible issue due to the fact that we don't have a good practicing facility. We don't have a place to practice our starts. We don't have uh, enough room to practice a an entire race stroke so and that could be definitely affecting our results as swimmers um, I personally am a lifeguard I work with the Greenfield Park and Rec and um, I do not I sometimes refuse to work here at Whitnall High School's pool because of how dangerous it is um, if you would ever show up to one of the girls or boys swim meets you would notice that all of the spectators are on the pool deck and as a lifeguard that is so terrifying to me because it is difficult enough to watch and make sure that everyone who is swimming is safe but it's such an added effort to make sure that all of the spectators on the slippery pool deck are also safe and mm -hmm. it's it's impossible to sit and be a lifeguard in the guard stands because it is very unsafe if there was an emergency and i'd have to jump in um, you can't jump in from the guard stands and it's just, it's such a safety hazard. And I think years of neglect have a lot has added to that as well. Go ahead. Um, Go ahead. Again, with uh, spectators, since we only have one home meet, uh, spectators definitely increase the amount that come than they would to regular meets at different schools because in other schools they have more uh, meets that they can show up at so we definitely have a larger amount of spectators coming which results in more uh, possible uh, accidents especially with little children that come and there have been a, a lot of little children we also believe that this renovation to the pool um, it wouldn't just benefit you know the high school boys and girls swim team but it would benefit the community um, the SWAT club team they rent out the pool to use um, Greenfield Park and Rex they use it we use it so 
there's um, you know there's summer classes that use it so if we could make this facility safe and enjoyable and just updated even for everyone it would be a lot better and everyone could enjoy it and use it properly and safely thank you thank you very much <coughs> would anyone else like to address the board this evening at this portion of the meeting come on forward and state your name and address for the record well I'm Ben Bell 12154 Northridge Trail um, I'm also a member of the swim team and a big problem with the swim pool also is the sewer in the locker room also backs up so just the other day we could smell the sewer when we were practicing and it obviously can't be healthy to have people inside the locker room breathing in that air and being a practice for two hours breathing in that air so it's not a healthy place to practice thank you for coming forward Ben. thank you would anyone else like to address the board this evening anyone else like to address the board i'm not missing anyone back there yes you can't hear anyway because the mic's not on May I ask, if you do decide that you're going to have a referendum, would that be a non-binding referendum? No, it would be a binding referendum. Binding. And I do, well, as long as you're up, the microphone is really for the camera, not the room. Okay. <laughs> but I do because have a... I know, my husband said he couldn't hear, Right. we couldn't hear the other people speaking. It's on the camera, right. Okay, um, a question, though. You wanted sure. to know how many children live in the district. You want yes. our own enrollment history, right? We'll get that to you. Okay. And the history. From when to when, and where are we at census, in capacity? What right. Was your census 12 years ago. What 12 do you years ago. Your census to be in right. The last okay, we'll get that to you. I just wanted to clarify that. Okay. Uh, next up on our agenda, then we will have. Uh, was well, anyone else? Now that she's full, anyone else? Give everybody a chance here. Seeing none, then we'll move to reports, and we'll start with our committee reports. Do we have any <coughs> this evening? There's a finance committee finance report committee, from okay. our meeting from November 17th, uh, at which point we discussed the early retirement for the teachers and we recommended to leave the plan as presented at a prior board meeting but change the requirement for participation in the district health plan. Uh, and then we that's how we advised the board. Uh, and then Mr. Johnson gave a report on the current retiree accounts. Uh, the district would like to be able to disperse the funds that they've been holding on to for those that are currently retired. And the committee had needed more information uh, but to have the discussion. We were looking for what is what our legal position is, what we can and can't do with that money, uh, or how we could disperse it. Uh, and then we were also wanting to know how long some retirees have been on the plan and how long we would expect them to stay on the plan for the for the group that's actually spending the money for the premium uh, and so we're looking to possibly review that in january and have those questions come forth we did a quick review for the edgerton parking lot uh, modifications were made to that design an additional exit will be made sidewalks will be added uh, the project will go out to bid in january for a june start date the current cost estimate for the project is about one hundred and fifty thousand. And then we had a memo that was provided to the committee to explain the status of the high school gym floor. And that was about it okay. in a nutshell. Thank you. And we anticipate meeting again the first part of January. <coughs> well, go ahead, Quinn. Yes, the policy. Uh, policy committee met on uh, November 25th. And we discussed the agreement uh, that we have with the Booster Club and their policies and procedures that they want to implement. And uh, the committee felt that there should be a, a few uh, minor, maybe significant changes to some wording. And uh, uh, Ms. Rosenwald is going to take it back to her committee and uh, see what they say. And we also have uh, the uh, first reading of the uh, e-cigarette, the, the vape. We'll talk about that next. And uh, Dr. Holtz gave me a, uh, uh, a letter here from the uh, Wisconsin Association of School Boards that they are uh, uh, starting a technical excellence scholarships. And these are going to, this is a, a $2,250 per academic year up to three full years of full-time study at any participating Wisconsin Technical College. 
it, the first one will be available and will be in will be 2015 so if we uh if we get going on it and we get uh, everything submitted by february 1st this would be awesome because uh this board has spoken uh many times about careers not just uh, a college uh, uh, diploma college education but careers in the trades and uh this is one way that uh i think that it's not a secret that we need people in the trades and it's a secret all over the state and uh money is coming to uh to us to do this so uh dr holtz and uh, and uh kathy are probably working on uh on a uh, policy it doesn't it states right in here it doesn't have to be perfect for the first year as long as we tell everybody and then once we see how it works we can really um develop the policy so uh it's and i told dr holtz as soon as he gets a a, a policy that he that he kind of likes uh i'll, I'll uh, have a meeting asap and we'll get this going and hopefully get it submitted by february 1. all right thank you <coughs> personnel did we meet no we met before uh okay uh next we'll have superintendent's report Ooh, the most exciting part of the meeting. <clears throat> um, just a couple highlights from the last couple of weeks, and there's been a ton. So, I mean, if you follow along on Facebook and see what Dave writes uh, um, out to our parents and, and community, it, it's amazing what's going on in the community. The school forest, remember, um, we converted the, um, uh, what, what, what did it used to be called? Nature pod. The nature pod <laughs> into a school forest, wrote a grant for it. Um, Laura Sorletti kind of brought a group together, worked with Tony. Um, they've developed some curriculum. We've had some outstanding positive press in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel um, about the new school forest, along with all the effort of our students and staff to create a positive learning environment for kids of all ages. I mean, we had pictures of um, young elementary school kids all the way up to the high school kids helping us pull out the buckthorn and stuff like that. So it's been a great effort and a great team effort. Um, Whitnell Block Party proceeds. Um, it seems like a long time ago since we had the Block Party, but we are benefiting from uh, what happened during that fun family event. Um, this year, the nearly $2,400 that are that's donated to our arts department is going to be used to replace some of our older band instruments because we have a lot. We have a surge of numbers coming up through our elementary schools for band. It's really huge. Um, so as always, the donation is greatly appreciated, especially the people that put in a lot of volunteer time. Um, wheelchair basketball event. Besides the awesome event we had, the tournament we had this past weekend, um, one of our te middle school teachers, Steve Wilson, is extremely involved with it um, since he was a little kid. And um, but they, what I enjoyed was they traveled to Hales Corners Elementary to put on a, a demonstration. It was amazing. Like. What do they do when they uh, tip over in their chairs? No one's allowed to help them, and they have to get up as fast as possible because it's like falling down, and you're going to let your team down if you don't. It just the the exchange between the the younger children and the the guys who were on the Milwaukee Bucks wheelchair basketball was fun to watch. Um, they were very good with our kids, and so uh, thanks, special thanks to Steve and and uh, for all the kids for winning their falcon feathers, right? So so they could go to the the event. Um, speaking of uh, forward thinking, student safety and city cooperation, between the middle school and high school on 116th, that's, there's always been concerns since I've been here with traffic, kids crossing times, and all that type of stuff. And besides their city engineer working with some of our board members, safe routes to schools, and coming up with a different redesign of the road, mm -hmm. we still didn't have it nailed. And there's still a lot of traffic issues. We have Susie Astrew at our um, school resource officer we have principals going out there on a regular basis um, so the city engineer said let's put some signs up in the middle of the road and Matt Carson and I said awesome idea tell us what we need to do they said we'll take care of it they bought the signs they put them in the middle of the road for us and it really helps like when you're coming out of the high school parking lot and turning right you're looking left to make sure you can get between cars and soon as you turn the crosswalks there so if you're not paying attention you wouldn't see a kid in the crosswalk and that sign really jumps at you when you start to turn right so that's kind of nice and then um, last but not least we just got the note today that um, chief wentland approved our uh, uh, custodians operating as uh, crossing guards and stopping traffic to help the buses get out and um, he did a training with them 
and just gave us our long list and said we should have some kind of fun ceremony. He said it was sorry, but I don't know about that. Um, but um, the, the custodians will, will really help increase the safety out front. And so again, it, it's, a, it's a team effort and the city doesn't let us down in that aspect at all. Um, Senate accountability legislation meetings. We've got a legislative committee and we're always trying to, to make sure that the school has the opportunity to visit with our, our representatives, our senators. And uh, Senator Farrow asked uh, a team of like five superintendents to meet with him and go over his accountability legislation. It looks like it's gonna be something positive for all the kids in the state. I know it's gonna go through a lot of changes as it goes through the process, but it's really nice that they think of our schools and our school districts and, and try to bring us into the mix and hear what um, works best for our kids. And then last but not least, the AP Honor Roll. Um, someone earlier mentioned how the, the school district is a, a high-performing district. And um, what, when I talked to the staff, what was awesome about this was it's a recognition of the time and effort put in by all of our teachers. Kids don't all of a sudden get smart when they get to high school and take an AP class. It's the foundation that's built all the way up from 4K all the way through to when they take the classes in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, and so basically the students did a great job also of taking advantage of the opportunity. Our kids don't sit back, they, they challenge themselves. And of course the support of the board to make our district one of the best, letting us um, approving the courses we asked for, if, if we can show that it'll benefit our kids is never an issue with the school board. So um, that wraps up my report. Thank you. You're welcome. I wondered if you were gonna get in a wheelchair and take those guys on. <laughs> They're too good. They're, well, they're very strong and fast. I just want to yeah. say I was flying out of Mitchell on Friday and the Dallas Maverick mm -hmm. wheelchair team was coming mm -hmm. in and I said, I know where you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous to see that we can do that here. That's great. All right. Thank you. So next up we have the first reading of revised policy 443.3 use or possession of tobacco and e-cigarette products, alcohol, <coughs> controlled substances, drugs, and drug paraphernalia by students. So as you can tell by the title, we have to update our policies based on these new issues that arise and the changes in the e-cigarette thing. So Quinn, do you have anything to add? Otherwise the board has in front of them the old policy. Looks like we're just adding some language yeah, that now simple. will cover e-cigarettes, correct? Correct. Correct. Does anyone have any questions for Quinn or comments on this change? It looks like they're just adding one sentence. I just have a quick comment. Oh, did you? Is that no, right? I don't. Oh, just <laughs> at, I was reading the paper, Sunday's paper, and they were just talking about these e-cigarettes and being produced in China, and there's very little regulation um, to what is coming over here. So. Um, <coughs> as if we didn't need another reason to include this in our, our do not do <laughs> list. <laughs> that that was a little scary in that article, so I'm happy that we're addressing this right we're away. We're addressing it. We're Quinn? No. Okay. Anyone else? If not, this will come forward then at the next meeting right here today for a vote. The second meeting. Okay. We should be able to move that forward. Okay, next up is our D community survey results. Just to give some of you a little bit of a background, we've, we've had several, for several years, our Facility and Finance Committee has been studying the issues that are currently being looked at in terms of how do we as a board, how does our, how does our community solve some of the issues for some of our schools. They really revolve around aging facilities, boilers that are outdated, and um, some of the new requirements for learning, some of the new requirements, the ADA concerns for our Americans with Disabilities Act and students with disabilities. And hearing from some of you tonight sure gave us, you know, again, the reality of what, how difficult some of our old buildings can be. So we've been looking at safety, we've been looking at learning needs, we've been looking at energy needs where we can actually save some money by upgrading. And these, these costs, of course, do add up. So the board is tonight looking at, we, we felt very uncomfortable even moving forward without listening to our community first. It's sort of a listen, study, listen, study. That's how we've been proceeding. So we did do a survey, uh, it was ended in November, and so we looked at the results at the last meeting. And so tonight, and the board did, based on what we saw, eliminated one of the proposals, and that was the middle school proposal. So tonight we're gonna look again at these projects and um, at the end of this discussion, we still are not gonna have a final final, but we are just gonna agree which projects of the ones now left on the list 
Should we move forward? What other questions do we have? I'm sure there's going to be a lot more discussion before we're done. So with that little bit of a background, and then of course, we're working with you, with our community to make this decision and, and hear what you have to say, get, make sure all of your questions are answered and work with us to figure out what's in the best interest of this district and this community. So, uh, Dr. Holtz, do you want to go ahead and lead uh, the discussion here tonight? Sure. Matt, um, those PDFs, do you have on the laptop as well or not? It would be nice to get those up there for the audience um, do you to see. Step up and I'll, oh, okay. as you're getting that ready. Um, <coughs> I did, and thanks to Luann, I did put this, um, this little four page uh, option summary together and I'm gonna work off of that because it's handy to have. <laughs> um, but the first, the first question on the survey was related to the um, Hales Corners Elementary School options. Um, and the first question is whether we would build a new Hales Corners Elementary at the existing site. And um, it was the survey, 86, uh, I'm sorry, 63% of the people who responded said they would likely be likely to support a referendum for the Hills Corners elementary needs. Um, and over half said it was important to main a school, maintain a school at the current HCE location. And the majority um, supported building new rather than renovating. And again, the prices for new, we put a range of between 19 and 21, and that's ultra, um, conservative estimating it's estimating we don't we don't ever want to go over but I'm very confident that that number is going to be pushed um, maybe even lower um, on the low end not the high end but the renovation cost between 15 and 17 million so it's there's like a two million dollar difference between renovation and um, building new at HCE and um, when you think how you how you would stage moving kids around while you're doing the renovating I went through a renovation project uh, in a smaller district that was moving middle kids, middle school kids up to a middle school high school. And um, I still had to do the, the, the dance with the high school kids as one piece is getting torn down. And so they'd be in their English or, or chemistry class and the, the, um, the demolitions occurring like 50 feet away down the hall and you can hear the, the stuff break and fall in. And that was tough with a high school group. It'd be extremely challenging with a elementary school. We'd end up having to look for probably alternative locations for them as well. So I'm glad that the community came back and, and um, when given the choice between the, the three options, they ranked a new elementary as the first. Um, <coughs> Matt, you have a, a picture of a, now Matt <laughs> put some boards up and if you had time to look at them earlier, you know, he's got a picture of um, what we looked at when we were renovating and also uh, what you would, what it would look like if we rebuilt on the same site. The advantages to that are the kids stay in the school where they are while the building is being developed. And once the building is finished, the kids move into the new building. The old building is um, to turn into the green space. Okay, um, can you get one of those PDFs up there, Matt, or not? Yeah, that's it. This is the one that... No, I, yeah, but I mean uh, a picture of the... Oh, that Matt? Matt? Yeah. Oh, sure. Just to the board packet, yeah. Just the pretty pictures. Yep. Page 8 of the board packet. The, while he's doing that, the um, the option that received the least amount of support was adding on uh, an elementary addition onto the middle school, which is why last week the board said let's at least focus just on the top two for now, um, and then hopefully on the top this. one. Otherwise, everybody's just going to watch me search. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and they need, to so, paying, they need to be paying attention. That that was uh, that's the stimulate discussion part now so if you want to talk about how you feel about I mean are you confident in the results of the survey the board you know um, they had been studying it for a long time they um, uh, commissioned the survey to get the feedback from the community uh, with the idea of responding to that feedback so okay so we took off the middle school so we're looking at how do we feel do we want to build a new school, or do we want to renovate? 
we always have the option of doing nothing, but that's not where we're going at the moment. Um, with someone, when, let's try to each put our, our thoughts out there because it's such a big decision. Do you want to renovate or is, is a new school a better option for us? Which one should we move forward? Who would well, like to start in my us opinion, off? Uh, I, I would not support a renovation. Um, the disrupt, disruptancy it would put on the kids, the amount of money, and we're not going to solve our, our basic problem. One of our basic problems is our class sizes. 80% of the classes are still going to be the same size they are now, without lockers, without proper storage, without um, room for our teachers and children to operate properly. It, to me, that's throwing good money at bad. Uh, the only option that I see viable is, is a brand new one. Okay. Can I back up a second and address the enrollment issue that someone was asking about as well? Go ahead, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to say that um, we do have two options on the table as far as spatial planning goes on the site. This is just showing one. We also have an option showing the building this way, but for tonight's presentation and for the sake of just getting the message out, we do have more than one option. This is not set in stone. We haven't even really um, started exploring things with our visionary team. So this is a, a for example. All right. Uh, so the enrollment <coughs> question, do you have that information handy? Um, right, we did a look couple at that months ago, I gave a presentation on the right. enrollments. We've been looking at that. Our enrollment's pretty steady. And it's not, we are also getting a study done that we'll know just to make sure that we look at the future, we're having an actual, uh, what's that study called? And it'll be done, it should have been done by the end of the month, if oh, not early January. End of the year, they said, yeah. That, end of the, the year. Applied, the applied population. The applied study. population study, so that we can be sure we're building a, a, a new, if we build a new school or renovate, whatever we do, we want to make sure that it meets the needs of the future population to whatever degree we can predict. So we have commissioned to have that study done. We have about 2,700 <coughs> kids, correct, in the district? Mm -hmm. That's our right. enrollment for the entire district. They don't all live in the district. We have about, don't quote me exactly, it's like 39% are oh. Hales Corners, and 34, 35% are Greenfield, okay? And then 6% are, I mean, they all live, that group all lives in the district. 6% <coughs> are Franklin. And then we also have a small percentage that come in and open enrollment. So when we have seats open, we can certainly allow students from the outside to come in. So that's how we've balanced our enrollment. So I think one of the things Mrs. Hanson was trying to get at was the open enrollment number at HC, <coughs> I think is part of essentially what, do you remember what that is, Doug, the number of kids that are open enrolled at HCE? I, I don't know okay. that I've had by building. Principal? Yeah, does, does Ms. Gomez? Okay. And, and there's two types of open enrollment, though. We have kids who come in initially into the district as open enrollment. And then we have students who resided here originally and then became, you know, then left the district but wanted to remain in the school district, stayed on a tuition waiver. And historically, the board then has accepted those students as open enrollment the following year. So, well, those numbers then are going to be a little skewed because it might appear that they were all entered in as <coughs> non-residents initially, but that's not the case. It's a blended number. Okay, thanks. Okay, we'll have to get that information. Okay. Did we? Did that answer your question? Yeah. Can I ask a question? You speak about class size. What class size? Consider that's a good question. Do well, you want to clarify? At Hills it's Corners, the building size, not the class size. No, the class size. I'm going with the class size. <laughs> classroom size. I'm sorry, yeah. but the physical size. Yes. No, As mean, opposed to the number of students. students, 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 students. Right. Oh, they, they're in about the 25 range to 30 at the most in that area? Well, that's our max, right? Right. What I was talking about was the, the square footage of the current Hills yeah. Corners yeah. classrooms are about 900 square feet. Uh, Edgerton's are about 1,200 square feet. We don't, our hallways at Hill, Hills Corners are not wide enough to allow lockers. So the, the, the teachers have to use classroom space to house boots, 
clothes, jackets, everything that the kids bring. Then on top of that, they have to package it so that if some child brings something into the school that is not wanted, it doesn't get passed around to all the people, all the kids. Okay, Matt, could you also give us the building, age of the building right away? So yeah, so the portions, reconstruction and the building. Portions age. of the building are older than others. There's three different ages of the building. So he's going to show us that right now. But then there's one more thing that you can do the dress. If we speak of a fifteen million dollar renovation or a seventeen, how much is that as a tax increase on a two hundred thousand dollars? We did didn't we do yep. that? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We've got yeah. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On a um I don't have the survey in there though. I the 15 to 17, to it's um, 100 to 113 dollars per hundred thousand. So if you have a 200 thousand dollar house, it'd be 200 to 226. And then on a new building, so this is irrespective of full renovation and all right. that. Right. And a new, just one of the three. Mm -hmm. Right. But a new building would be 127 to 140. The new building, they're very close. 113. 100 to 113 to 127 to 140. Did you follow that? Am I making that clear? The two different proposals. I know you wouldn't consider it to be relevant, but we were, we were Florida residents for two years, and our taxes on a 2,000 square foot home were $1,760. And that's because a certain percentage of the assessed valuation was not subject to tax. So it helped people on the lower end. Mm -hmm. That might be something okay. to consider. Okay, I have the, the Go ahead, the age of the building. The age of the building. The original building was constructed in 1948, and additions were put on in 1954, 1957, and the far west edition is the 1992. Thank you. <coughs> All right, so board members, questions. What should we move forward, the new <coughs> or the renovated, renovated portion? I would, I would support either for the simple reason that Thanks, I think I have I have a lot of faith in, in whoever plans and what <coughs> they want it to look like, the, that we would find a way to have the renovations serve the needs of, of the students coming through. But I also know how difficult renovation can be. We can't just lop off the old sections, keep only 1992, and reconstruct the rest. I, I think that that's a bit of a challenge. That building that building is is difficult to navigate for anyone with special needs and physical limitations it's difficult to to serve our students the tra the staff and custodial staff do a fantastic job of of keeping that building running but i also think how much and how nice our community deserves a new school and i think that it would be a really big asset to the community to have a new school on that property but those are my personal feelings, and it is up to our community to advise us. But as a board member, I would support either one. Um, Eileen? Um, kind of my thought on renovation versus uh, the new school is, I kind of at this point prefer the new school because I feel that we, we take care of the, the, the whole school instead of what we've always been doing is piecemeal, piecemeal, piecemeal. So that we never have the whole thing done at one at one time to meet all the to meet all the needs. Um, also given the difference, you know, of whatever it's twenty, thirty dollars more a year for me as a taxpayer and maybe other taxpayers hopefully will share that same thing, is to have a building that's complete seems that for that extra amount that it would be worth could be worthwhile. Um, I also think it would be dis less disruptive to the students to do the new build and not be renovating um, the existing building. All right. John? Well, I, <clears throat> I think that uh, because of the dollar amount, I think um, the renovation project of that scale isn't, isn't as practical as, as building new. If we were to... Uh, for me to support a renovation project, it would have to be um, something that that is a much smaller scale, intended to be shorter term, uh, to bridge the gap to a, a better economical time period. It wouldn't be a renovation project of, of this size. So, it, if there was a 
renovation project that was much scaled back and not intended to be as long or as permanent, that's something that I could support um, or building new. But the, the renovation project at this scale, uh, for all the various reasons that, that have been mentioned, um, I would be less likely to, to support. All right. Do you have it? Um, <clears throat> I think the new school, I said it the last meeting, I said it all along, I think the new school makes the most sense for the short term and long term future of the community, the school, um, and if we do it, as John was saying, as people said before, if we do a piecemeal thing now, we're, we're putting money into something that's going to need to be redone again in a few years. So let's do it right the first time and be able to move on and have a school, to, a school building that works. Okay. Um, I also agree that the new school option is the way to go with this um, financial climate that we're in with the low interest rates. I don't think that um, this would be a time to do a small renovation and wait for something later um, as interest rates may rise as the further that we go. Um, I would just hope that whichever construction management company that we hire would um, work really hard to keep the cost as low as possible. I do understand the impact on our community members and um, so I hope that uh, costs could be as low as possible. I do know that um, higher interest rates were figured in these numbers so um, I'm sure that uh, right there there would be a, a difference in the in the dollar so that would be my my charge to the construction company. Well I guess I better speak. Um, <coughs> like some of you have said, I, I could go either way. It's a decision we make with our community. And I'm sensitive to the high cost of taxes in this district. I am. We all pay them. Um, but as was stated tonight, people move here for our schools because they are so good. They move into this district, and those cost, they do cost money. Um, so I think it's been our job to really study this and take a look at what are all the concerns, and it is it is hard to look at a building like that that we have maintained pretty darn well but when you get in there and you start looking at what these issues are for example like the the child who has a disability and can't get around all those different levels the the um, public comes in we have elderly people with disabilities too it's not just our children but these are public buildings that's a very difficult thing one thing we haven't talked about tonight but we have plenty of times a lot of this also is driven by the safety issues and, and given that we just went past the anniversary of Sandy Hook, we have to look at our buildings now way different than we did. We have to figure out how can we configure these buildings so they are really safe for our students, for our staff, for our teachers. It's really sad that as we sit here tonight that we have to even think about that for our kids, but we do. So given that we have these ADA, the Americans with Disability Act concerns. We have some boiler problems. They're really old. And we have um, some learning environment needs that we need to look at the space that we use. As long as we're going to look at doing something with that building, it makes sense to me, too, that we look at the learning needs of our students. Because we're in a technology and a knowledge-based age, and we, if we can design a school that meets that learning need to me that would that would be the way to go because of the again going back to the <coughs> renovation doesn't really make the more we got into it i mean at first i was really open to the renovation i was even open to the middle school concept but we heard pretty clear from our community that wasn't maybe the way to go i was open to all of that but as we got in there and then we looked at well if we do this plan it was less money, but it didn't meet this need. If we did this plan, it was less money, but it didn't meet, we could maybe meet the safety need if we did this, <coughs> but it wouldn't take care of the ADA needs. Oh, well, uh, this plan would maybe do 90% of the ADA needs, but not all of them, right? And we looked at a variety of configurations and not a one really met the needs of safety, of Americans, of our kids and disabilities, and of the learning environment, and the energy concerns. None of them <coughs> met that entirely. So as we went through the process, that's how we came up with these two options. Well, if we're going to compare apples to apples, what would it take to bring this building up to code? Um, this district has zero debt. And that's a real credit to past boards, to past administrations, and to this community for how this district has been managed. It's got zero debt. The interest rates are low. So it is a good time, um, in my opinion. And for those reasons, I think I would support moving forward at this point a new school 
there's more to be studied, more to be talked about, and certainly we need to listen, continue to listen to our community about um, what's all involved in a new school on that site. So that's how I feel, Dr. Holtz. Is there anything you'd like to add? Just that I was impressed by the strong response on the survey, which leans toward uh, number one, doing something on that site. Number two, with the majority wanting a, a new building on that site. And we were not, I mean, we, we put numbers in the survey um, and those were the, the higher numbers. Now, we want those numbers to be lower, you know, like Nancy said, I mean, and that's going to be a strong focus and charge of the board before we get to that January 19th date. But um, I know I was very, I was very impressed by the, I mean, every group, the all residents, the staff residents, the non-parent, non-staff <coughs> residents overwhelmingly supported doing uh, uh, a referendum to address the needs of Hales Corners Elementary. Okay, so I think that part we can move forward with. At the end of the at the end of these this discussion, we will then be passing a resolution at the next meeting that would authorize our administration to further explore that option. So now we've gone from three down to two down to one. So it's still not a final final, but at least we would be moving forward with some clarity <coughs> on these proposals. Okay, now we'll be discussing number two, the deferred maintenance and energy efficiency projects, I guess. I would ask if Matt would mind, where's Matt? Giving us again a brief um, proposal, what's in front of us here. We're gonna look at the needs, but there are some other ways we could fund this and then the board has to determine what our priorities are. We've certainly heard several of you say we shouldn't bundle them. That's, you know, we'll discuss that at another point too. But. Uh, assuming everyone can see the board at this height, I can move to the front of the room and if not, um, what's, what's photographed here is um, this is the south wall of the, or east, I'm sorry, east wall of the high school. It's the old classroom air distribution. And what happens there is the air is actually pushed through a tunnel under the school and then it comes back up along the outside wall and then out these little grills. Um, that's all original construction. Um, we've added a significant amount of heat load in the classrooms with um, more people and more technology. So the rooms, are getting warmer. We do have air conditioning, but um, it's hard to keep up when that sun, you know, that's, when the sun is beating through the glass. You know, we do close the blinds and we, we do things like that, but it's, you know, it's original building. Um, and so the building envelope itself um, project that's listed here will be taking care of a lot of these old panels and single pane wall systems that were put in originally with the school, but we're also looking at improving the classroom ventilation by putting in what's called like an energy star, a certain amount of CFM per student, uh, certain temperatures to be held. Uh, we'll just have a lot more control in the classroom. This system right here, pictured above, is the Junior Furnace at Edgerton Elementary. This is the original furnace. So if you can picture um, your furnace at home, but half the size of maybe the board tables here, um, that's the actual burner for the furnace. You can, you can climb inside there. And so I just opened it up quickly, took a picture with my iPhone, just to show you guys um, this unit. This unit right now is about 82% efficient. We take good care of it. Um, every five years, we have to spend about 13 grand on it to do the refractory work. We basically rebuild this whole mortise and tube here. Um, and that's how we heat uh, about a third of the school. We don't have really any control over the fan speed or anything like that, so we just it's just on and off, just like your furnace at home. Um, the, the boiler plant at the high school is, um, is a unique opportunity. We have three of these 300 horsepower uh, boilers in the school right now, and they were built um, to handle a much larger heating load than the school has. So what we would do with this project is we would <coughs> actually do away with these old units, and we put in some smaller units that would run basically what they call shoulder months, so from April to October. And so what we'd be allowed to do then is you could shut these 300 horsepower boilers down, in a sense maybe run like a 100 horsepower boiler, still heat domestic hot water for the school, still heat the uh, reheat system that's overhead here, and we should save a significant amount of money. We would keep the large boiler for those minus five degree days, or if we get a constraint day and we energy is asking us to run fuel oil, um, we do have about 11,000 gallons of fuel oil here at the high school, 
So we have an opportunity there if they say to, if they tell us to get off their gas, we can shut down, we can run on fuel oil for a couple of days and I'll save a significant amount of money in our, in our utility. Um, it's just not a picture of building envelope. We're just it's just moisture problems. You know, we're we're doing different things in the science departments. Um, the, the old wall systems um, are just showing their age. So that's moisture. That's just moisture coming through. Um, since I've been here in 2008, I have not invested a lot of money into these systems, primarily because of their age, and I don't want to just you know piecemeal it and go all the way down the line. We, you know, prefer to just pull this off and get these classrooms done in a wing move to the next one and get that one done and just take a holistic approach. Um, and that th this work, as significant as it seems, is included in that um, range that was uh, provided to you in the survey. So it's, it's a real practical approach to energy. There are cost savings associated with this. We did look at that at some point because yeah, of the over cost, life. Cost savings, you know, um, you know, a lot of people would argue return on investment on that. Um, so we'd have to get the construction managers and some engineers involved to run the numbers. Um, what we'd be really looking to do though is, um, I look at the wall system as part of the infrastructure of the school. And so as much as we need energy efficiency, and we also need a strong skeleton. And so, the, you know, just like you do siding on your house, you know, this is uh, 1950s siding. So it's, um, it's, a, it's a critical component. All right. Any other questions from the board? Um, I think what we're deciding is, do we move this project forward? And then if yes, we have two funding options for this. One would be to go to referendum and, and do that this spring. Or, and then the kind of the side question to that is, do we bundle them or have seven qu separate questions? But aside from that, let's start with just where do we, maybe we can comment on all three at the same time, but do we move it forward? And if so, how do we want to fund it? And uh, do you want to give us, then John, I'll ha call on you right away, but what, do you want to explain that other funding option? Sure. Um, sort of throw this all on the table. Uh, the this, this state legislature has, has, has passed uh, Act, what's called Act 32, and that allows um, school districts to levy um, additional dollars to, for energy projects. Now, there's quite a bit of law in between that, and I, I actually have a book back there that, that goes through Act 32. But in a nutshell, it allows the school board to levy for energy projects without having to go through the referendum. And we'd still have to go through the um, annual meeting process for that. Have to, yes, so the public the other, is still involved. Other, yes, it has it's to be noticed. There's a petition period right. that, that follows this. Um, different way. It's going to be talked about in length at the board. But just so everybody here gets just a simple understanding of what that is. OK, thanks, John. Yeah, um, I wondered, uh, I meant to ask you earlier and I, I didn't get to it, is, um, is there any sort of uh, federal um, uh, either assistance program or kickback or anything like that for, for a school district doing, uh, doing uh, energy projects? Like there is if you put in, a, you know, solar cells at your house or something like that. I mean, is there any kind of... Yeah, they have, they have offered things like that. <coughs> Oftentimes the projects don't, the, the projects that they want you to use those dollars on, like hot water heat for a swimming pool, just don't have the return on investment. So you, you can get some dollars to help you pay for that, but in the long run, it's still, it's still costly to the school. So none of the work you're proposing would, uh, would qualify for? Some of the work we do on uh, some of the stuff would qualify for re rebates from Focus on Energies. Okay. Um, so we would totally take advantage of that sure. the project. But as far as like federal dollars, Okay. So, and then you say that there's not, there, there's not necessarily enough uh, cost savings to, I mean, you know, things that are more efficient, they, they do cost more, but then again, you're spending less in energy. So, but you're saying there's not quite enough savings to, to pay for uh, in the long run. Right. I, mean, I can't, I can't stand in front of the audience with a good conscience and say that these windows are going to have a three-year payback because it's just not true. No, but leaks and stuff are... Well, of, of course, yeah. that, it's hard to measure and it's right. hard to quantify. But again, going back to um, this is the skin of the building, <coughs> you need to tighten it up. But I'm referring more to like the more efficient boiler situation right. and that kind of stuff. If, you're, uh, if, you're, if it doesn't pay for itself and if what we have is in good shape and works, then what's the taxpayer's incentive to support replacing boilers at added cost? Well, it's, it, it's longevity. I mean, okay. the, these have been in um, since the since 
since the building was built. We're not getting rid of all of them. The steel is good. Um, we, would rec we would retrofit them with um, newer, more solid state technology um, because they are not bad, but they are too big. And it, we're just, we're just, there's a lot of standby heat loss in these, and there's a lot of heat loss in the system. Um, we can do a much better job. So the, the purpose of the expense would be to essentially be better energy stewards? Right. Okay. It's, so, hard, it's, hard, it's hard for me to, to say, you know, with the weather, if you have a really cold winter, you know, really warm winter, they nominalize all that. Um, so as we, as we looked at our options, we could do, you know, this is what it costs at the burner tip. Sure. This is what it costs at the burner tip, and then try to come up with the best average. But I would really feel more comfortable working on that with the engineer than but they're past their life. The they're age? past their life, though. Bye. They, they, yeah, sure. I mean, they're way past their life. Yes, but you know, we maintain them. We take care of them. You know, mm -hmm. so on average, we spend about six thousand dollars a year on them. So, okay. you know, thanks. So, John, move it forward. Uh, I actually, I, I can't really express an opinion right now. My, my concern okay. is that we would be. I mean, I mean the way I look at things is i mean they work now they're in good shape uh it's not like more efficient stuff would pay for itself so really the purpose of spending the taxpayer dollars would be to be better energy stewards and uh, for the most part is what i'm what i'm getting at that and not that that's insignificant but there are other things we're looking at spending the taxpayer dollars on for the education of the kids directly and if we you know people only have so much money to go around so my First, I mean, if there's something that could pay for itself, I would be much more on board. I thought there was a payback that we looked well, at. Well, there's some. Well, there was. There's with, some. With the boiler specifically, because there there, that's probably lower hanging fruit than, let's say, windows. Right. Um, we, could, we could do um, a study and find out exactly what that return on investment would be. Now, we haven't taken it that far to, to give you, you know, good numbers, because um, I don't even know what boiler we're going to specify to put in there. So, um, you know, if we go condensing or not condensing. So, if, if, if we're allowed to study this more, we'll be able to give you a better. Okay. Uh, better and, and that's what we're doing tonight, deciding yeah, to keep moving forward. I'm in favor of, of further study, okay. you know, but, but I'm not so much in favor of spending millions of dollars just to cut our energy bill, not buy enough where it would pay for itself. And, yeah. and part of the problem really is um, I mean, a lot of folks don't know this, but Matt has taken such he and his folks have taken such good care of our stuff that that uh, the useful life, I mean, on the calendar is one thing, but when you look at the equipment, I mean, it's almost shooting yourself in the foot a little bit by uh, by taking such good care of the stuff. So, um, I'm, I'm just I'm just okay. thinking about where it's been. He takes good pictures. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. So I'm just thinking about, okay. you know, we're we're talking about you know, money for a better uh, educational environment for the kids. And money mm -hmm. to yep. to cut some energy costs. I mean, it's yeah. Yeah, separate. Hey, Jennifer. Just picking back off of that. So yeah. one of the issues yeah. at HCE is the deferred maintenance we've mm -hmm. done, right? So if we defer this long, are we going to end up in a similar situation? It's possible. That's certainly so a if factor. We could, if we could be proactive about getting it done now mm -hmm. and paying less now, then maintenance over a couple of years and paying more in addition to additional higher interest rates. Wouldn't it make more sense to do it now? Not necessarily. Well, because, because I just don't know that in this economy, interest rates may be low, but there's a reason for that. In this economy, she would be adding, on a $200,000 house, she'd be adding $200 per year to somebody's taxes for this, and $130 a year for that, and then uh, $75 a year for this. I mean, I'm just, I think we need to look at them as, I mean, this isn't what you're asking necessarily right now, although you've, in, you've indirectly asked. I think we look, need to look at these as separate issues. Mm -hmm. And for right now, I want to prioritize, you know, if, if we can pick one issue, um, if we need to rack and stack them, the energy thing is not on the top of my list. Okay. Is it yours, Jonathan? Um, I think HE is on the top of the list. Yeah. Um, but I think that um, if we have a better, if we have a chance to do it now, um, to, so that we don't end up in a situation like we are with HCE, where we defer, 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 defer. And Matt's done a great job taking care of it, but I do see that there would be a benefit in making that change. Um, so is it more important than HCE? Absolutely not. Um, but I think that not winding up in a situation like HCE is also important. So yes, I would say we should pursue it. Nancy? 
Um, I kind of agree with John, both Jonathan and John. Um, I think we should move forward with it um, to some degree, but I'm not sure exactly what degree that is. And um, my biggest fear is that if we don't plan this, we may be in a situation where the boilers go out, they can't be fixed, exactly. and then mm -hmm. what? Then we've got, you know, kids in, not in school because, you know, the schools are shut down because it's zero outside and we can't heat the buildings and, and whatever. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I think, really think we need to move forward, but I'm not sure exactly how far. Sure. It, I, I would like to clarify some when you ask about my thoughts on it. I, I don't think that my thoughts should get in the way of us asking the folks what they want to do. Okay. So That's I would good to know. I would not say let's not yeah, ask for a referendum. I would say you know decide. I think the whole point of public. these public discussions is also <coughs> okay. you know to to put the knowledge out there so that they can make an educated choice on the ballot. I mean I think when it was a pretty resounding yes. Sixty-four yeah. percent yeah. asked for the survey, so we did ask their opinion. Of, they came back for the eighteen resounding. percent that responded, right? Yeah. So based on the results we have, it right. was and, and sure. I just, can I, can I in? The, the largest number in this piece is the classroom air distribution. <coughs> so that the the energy projects, even though they're, they're labeled that way, that's a big component. The learning environments that are going to be affected by this would almost yeah. be the entire high school and majority of and the rest of Edgerton Elementary. So <coughs> as much as it is an energy project, it's also a learning environment project. So you're getting the learning environments into, you know, into shape. Okay. And also the gymnasium at the high school. Um, before I, I get to this side, I just saw a hand go up. Did you have a question there? I, it, this is a committee as a whole, so we do allow more interaction with our public. The question I have is, uh, you said both those boilers were oversights for the job, which means that they, you know, or running it to keep uh, peak capacity all the time. Is it possible to shut one down and run one at a higher capacity at full percent, I can, 100 yep. percent for the we want that part? Right. Average. We run one boiler. Okay. All year, and we just alternate them. Okay. Um, and we can run one boiler at low fire all school year and okay. still have plenty of heat and not have to worry about any kind of thermal shock. So then on a extremely cold day, let's say minus five, do you kick in the second boiler? No. no well, I mean, I've seen them in my in my seven years here, I've seen them running at about 80% maybe when we had that polar vortex. Okay. That was about it. One boiler? One, one boiler. One boiler. Okay. All right. Well, about, can I just ask one more quick yes. question before no, we move on fine. to someone else? Um, so I'm assuming, Lil, that these numbers are, we're also using higher interest rates and things yeah. like that. So this was the 4.99 versus what right now um, kids said it was a 3.9 and we'd want to get Lisa, well, as we move forward, we'll get Lisa mm -hmm. Bryson in here to talk about different options that are best for our community. And <coughs> so these are worst case scenario numbers as well? Absolutely worst case scenario numbers, okay. yes. <coughs> okay, who's first? Okay, so <laughs> um, the energy project, we've been talking about this for at least four to four and a half years in finance and facilities. And I've heard it go both ways. I've heard advice to use Act 32, not have a formal referendum, use Act 32, do it at the annual meeting and get it done. I've also heard advice over the years that says don't use Act 32 unless the place is caving in on top of your head and it's an emergency. So... I've heard it both ways for funding. Um, this particular piece, I've always felt we've been living on borrowed time with the age of the equipment, despite how well it's been taken care of. Even the best equipment fails eventually. And this is something that does need to be pursued. And it needs to be asked of the public. It should be on the referendum as a separate item. Um, but I don't know that it's an emergency enough to be using Act 32 to get the funding and get it done because we're still going to the taxpayers to get the money. It's just a matter of how we do it. Do we do it in a referendum where we get more input than may be typical at the annual meeting? Um, I would rather do it that way or have a plan in place so that we can start planning and anticipating the day that we're going to make this happen eventually. Yes, it delays doing doing the work potentially but I would rather take a slightly more gradual approach okay. uh, <clears throat> well I, I'm sad that Joan and her husband left because I, I, I did want to address something that 
Well, it looks like we're wanting to spend a lot of money here. This board, this administration, our teachers, our principals have done a wonderful job of being, of being uh, fiduciary agents for the committee, for the, for the district. We don't tax to the max, which means there's a allowable amount, and, and she brought up uh, Governor Walken, I wanted to judge that, I should have, but there's a allowable amount that we can tax, and we don't. And we got penalized last year because we didn't do it. We, there was a $50, as crazy as it sounds, there was a $50 credit out there for schools that did tax the max, they gave them $50 a student more. Does that make sense? No, but that's what happened. We have been very, very good with the district's money. There's no doubt. And I just, I just got my tax bill this uh, Friday, everybody else, you know, and I don't like to see that number either. Uh, and I could be called cheap or frugal. It's, it's a borderline as to what it is. And uh, I prefer frugal. Uh, <laughs> Especially with your money, and it's my money too. However, I totally agree with Jonathan that we can keep we can keep pushing it off to the next guy, to the next commit, next next board. You know, we we let our our uh, football field track and water retention go for 50 years, and through frugalness, we paid for that out of the cash flow, out of the money we had. We didn't we didn't you know. Obviously, yes, the money came to taxpayers, came from the taxpayers through intervals, but we didn't, we didn't do a referendum. It's time. It's time to improve our facilities. There's no doubt about it. And if we, we take a short-sighted view of it, we're going to be back asking for more. And I will tell you that I, I listened to the people that came up here that talked, and I listened to people that I talked to uh, between... Uh, some of my comments at the last meeting, and I, I hear you. Don't bundle it. Let each one stand alone and either pass or not pass on its own merits. And I, and I told it, I, I'm not for that, but I think that's what needs to be done. Because it, it, we have all several times toured our facilities, our teachers work in the facilities, our principals work in the facilities, our administrators work in the facilities, and they need to be done. I'm all I'm for it all. And Doug made a comment to me uh, uh, after the last meeting. He couldn't believe that I was so willing to spend money. <laughs> but there's a time and a place for it, and this is the time and a place for it. That's it. I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> it's all been said. It's really kind of all been said. And the only thing I was going to just kind of piggyback on what you had gotten, you had mentioned is, you know, when we, we have these binders and we had information regarding the age of some of our, our equipment, our boilers, and I'm looking at something at the high school that says the boilers, there's two boilers, one age 46 and one 55, expected useful life 25 years. You know, I mean, I'm kind of a num you know, numbers person. Not everything is old, but there's a lot of stuff. Um, here's a hot water ex heat exchanger, age 55, expected life 15 years. So, I mean, I am looking at things that I... I see that we're, you know, we need, we, we're going to need to address um, sooner than later. Um, and I think that's the message that I want the community to know is that, you know, we're not just doing this just for energy efficiency sake, but some of this is going to be necessary sooner than later. Um, so I, that's why, that's why it's on the list. That was, that's why it's on the survey. You guys have pretty much covered anything, <laughs> covered it all. Um, so I would like to see it move forward as well. I'd like to see separate questions. Um, I'm open to the, still looking at the, what is it, Act 32 mm -hmm. option. Although I prefer to do um, these big projects <coughs> with bonds that are paid for over time versus the them coming out of our operating budget I just think I almost I think that's a more fiscally responsible way to go too it's, so but what, you know I'm open to that discussion but I'm certainly willing to put it on a referendum question separate for the community to decide because I'm with with what some of you have said boy what if what if they did just break down then you're in crisis mode whereas right now 
we're, we're in planning mode and let's put the issues out there. Certainly it can be argued that great schools, wonderful schools, hopefully they, I mean, they raise property values. So the more we invest in our schools, there is somewhat of a payback there um, in our community in terms of those values. <coughs> so I would, uh, anything else you'd like? I would certainly, I think I'm hearing to summarize the discussion. We should continue to study this. I'm with John though. I think there's a, I think there were that we will find some energy savings and I'd like to be able to present that to the public as part of this project. If we end up moving it forward, either way, I'd like to know what those are. I'd like to get that study done that we might need to do. Okay, so I think this is gonna move forward and get more study. Okay, and uh, we will still not answer the bundle question until we know for sure and we're closer on the dollars, but I'm not hearing much support for that anyway. Question I have, you said put it up for referendum or do with the Act 32, right? So the question is, should you not put it up for referendum and you, you, you use the Act 32, okay? And your taxpayers, let's say, voted in the elementary school project and so forth like that. And they figured X number of dollars are going to be where it says Whitnell School District. And they calculated because you gave the numbers saying, you know, it's 125 per 100,000. And all of a sudden, surprise, boom, they're doing their math and it doesn't come out. And there's a big, and you enacted Act 32 on it. How are they going to take that? Because you don't have to get the consensus of the taxpayers for Act 32. You can just increase the levy. No, we, well, we can't. We actually can't. We still always, our budget is always approved by the community. Right. So the community always has, they would still have that final decision, not us. We would recommend it to the community. Right. And that is still held in an open, um, open meeting and the public votes on our budget. On our didn't catch his okay, name. Okay, so, so it's voted. It's, it's yeah. not something. And it happened this year. It, it happened this year. The community came and cut back our budget one three hundred thousand. Yep. So that's how it goes. What is your name, sir? I know we. It's not a referendum, but you get it. What, what is your name? I know you didn't publicly speak, but. Pardon? Yeah, What's your name? Leonard Colden. Okay, Leonard. Thanks for Need coming. Need my address still? Not necessarily. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, last comments on that. Um, and then there's also, you know, if people are concerned. There's a petition process that the uh, taxpayers can use. So there, there's nothing that's dumped Wait a on them. You're talking about at, at the, 32. at the, okay. So there's, that's all part of the annual meeting. Right. Okay, process. Sorry, Did you want me to go on to this part now? Yes. Okay, so right. we'll move that one forward. Question, the next one would be, uh, question three would, I lost that, <coughs> would be around, um, okay. All right. Go ahead. All right. Um, um, let me pick it again. This was okay. the oh, this is the pool. I'm sorry, the Whitnall. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't know what I did with one. mine. <laughs> here, here it is. I got it. I'm sorry, the pool project. Again, this is an issue that's been on the table long before my coming here. Pool problem. Um, and the issue is it's not deep enough. We don't have diving capacity, and there's a lot of safety issues um, around the the way that uh, some of the audience has described it well around the viewing and the having to be on the deck. You have to go through the locker rooms to get to the pool. There's no outside entrance to the pool. So there's a lot of issues here um, that we are talking about with the high school. Um, right in that same area, we have a weight room. It's been proposed that possibly we could expand the weight room because it is too small and it doesn't meet the needs of our teams as well as the community. <coughs> would like to come in and use that weight room it's too small and locker rooms so that's that's question three do we want to move this part forward this one is at a cost between five and seven million correct and it would cost the taxpayers an additional thirty four dollars to forty seven dollars per hundred thousand so how are you all feeling about the pool we did some of us got a chance to, to tour that and it is it is really in need no question that that pool needs to be looked at. Uh, Who would like to start off this discussion? Well, again, the pool and that question has been around for many years. Um, and, you know, can I also just say that when we ask the administration to bring capital improvement projects in front of us, and these were the three major ones that were brought, they wouldn't have brought something that wasn't a need. They're much more responsible than that. So 
yes, all of these projects are needed. It's a question of priority. It's a question of finances. It's a question of what what needs the most attention. So they're all needed. And the pool, the pool is very needed. I've had comments that says, okay, you updated your outside. Why can't your inside athletic facilities be as nice? If they've been waiting a long time. There's equipment that my sister and brother used when they graduated from here. It needs attention. How we fund that and balance that against the needs of an elementary school and how we balance that against the needs of replacing boilers that are well past their useful life, I don't know. I'm always afraid to say that one group isn't as important as another and that's why we're spending it on this and not on this. I, I don't want to make value judgments about the people who use our facilities and our students who work so hard at their athletics. But I, I don't know how to balance all three of these needs to that same kind of a price tag. And that's where I struggle <coughs> on this particular issue. OK. Move it forward or not? I, I'm not as comfortable moving this one as forward as I am about an elementary school or replacing the boilers that are well past their useful life. OK. But I'd like to find a way to address it somehow. I just don't know that it's this round. Who would like to go next? Well, it's a, it's a it's a lawsuit waiting to happen. That's what it is. There's no doubt about it. I, we walked down there today, and I got pretty decent shoes on. And as we're walking on the deck, and there's some water splashed up, it's slippery. It's slippery. There's no doubt about it. And we've got people walking in and out of there all the time. The administration identified these issues. We investigated them. Let's let the people say if they want it or not. You know, it, it's really hard for me because I know they need to be done. It's really hard for me to, to go out and try and sell this because I'm like, well, go look at it. Go walk through it. You'll see, you know? We will have tours. So it's needed. Put it out there. Let the people vote on it. Okay. <clears throat> um, well, yeah, I, I mean, I agree. There's a need. I wouldn't bundle them. I would do them in se separate referendums. Um, I spoke with a board member from Greenfield. Um, interesting, when they did their renovation, they they did the high school, and then just a year or so after that, they were into the renovation of the high school. Then they put on the pool, um, and it and it got approved. So um, I don't have a problem putting it out there. Um, I will say that the survey didn't necessarily indicate that this will will go forward um, but I agree there's a deed why not and why not ask I also would say that you know we gave a range on the survey of five to seven million you know we had some other projections in in numbers that we were working with that were closer to the five not the seven mm -hmm. so um, hopefully we you know if we if we do decide to move this one forward as a separate que referendum question or hopefully a separate a referendum question that we could narrow down really um, the scope of the project and kind of narrow down on what the dollars would be and put it out there for the community to decide. All right. Over here. Want me to go? Go ahead, Nancy. Right, I've been on this board for six plus years and for probably every year we have a group of parents that come and talk to us about the pool. And we've neglected to take care of that in that time. And <clears throat> I, I definitely think it's a, a, you know, health and safety issues. Um, I think that any of the community members that come to our pool, um, uh, it's represented very poorly of Whitnall, that they have to walk through these horrible uh, locker rooms to get into the pool. They have to sit on the pool deck to watch any swim meets, whatever swim meets that there are. Um, you know, we have, <coughs> excuse me. We have many community members that, uh, that use the pool, and um, I, I think we need to move it forward. I, I just, I think we've waited too long on some of these items, <clears throat> and I just don't think we can wait longer. And, uh, and as others have said, you know, we'll just let our community members decide which ones they want to see us do. <coughs> okay, John or Jonathan? Um, do you want to go it? Okay. Um, the idea of waiting, so HCE is going to be done in 2017, 
potentially, right? So if we're waiting to do this, are we talking then 2019, 2020, to go back and say we need to get these done? I and mean, if we're waiting till HCE is done, that's 2017. So we're waiting another five years to go through and go through it again. So what kind of state are they going to be in at that point? Um, I think that's something to keep in the back of your mind. It'd be different if, and these could be done before HCE is done. Um, so that, that's something to consider, the timing of that. Um, I, I, you know, it was brought up Falcon Field. We have great resources available for our athletes. Where can they train for it if they can't all fit in the weight room? What kind of resources do they have for that? The pool is the most used facility in the district. It's not just some students in gym class doing it. It's our community <coughs> utilizing the pool. If it's not ADA compliant, and it's not just, and people are getting caught up, I don't care about swimming meets. It's not just about swimming meets. It's about, this is something that's used more by anybody in the community. I think it says in your 525 community and school events per year. It's more than one event per day. I mean, that's, it's a huge use. It's not just for the swimming team. And I think that's what people are getting lost on. Um, you mentioned about liability. Having people go through the locker room while people are changing, mm -hmm. I, the fact that that hasn't been an issue up until this point with everything that's happened at schools is astonishing to me. Um, and it's just waiting to happen. Um, I don't think that serves our community or the participants in any way, shape, or form to do that. Um, the weight room, it, yes, maybe, maybe it could potentially wait. But if we're coming in through and we're making a hole in the wall to get in to do the pool, it makes sense to work there. Why are we going to rebuild a wall that in a year and a half we're going to knock down to expand again later? I mean, it just sequentially makes sense to do it. Um, if we're going to provide our athletes with top-notch field and, and top-notch resources, let's give them a chance to train in between it so they can utilize it. If they have to go to the Y or someplace else to actually work out because they can't do it at school, well, what, what are we giving them? I mean, why, why do we have Falcon Field if they can't train here for it? Um, it's a ton of money. I, I know that. Um, and it's just adding on to it. Um, I think, though, saying, okay, we'll wait till HE is done. We'll come back in 2019, 2020 to discuss that. It's just... It doesn't make sense to do. Um, so that's. So I think this one's a bit easier, really. Um, first off, on, on the uh, on the, um, the there is no physical connection that I can see between the pool and the uh, and the weight room. So I I think the proposal to expand the weight room wouldn't affect the um, the space of the pool at all, as far as when you knock the wall out and you knock it out again, wouldn't be required because. They're not physically connected, so uh, that's that's the one thing I, I I don't see there as to why the weight room is wrapped up in with the pool project when I don't think they physically touch. I could be wrong. Does anybody have any other <clears throat> insight on that as to whether they? I can tell you why they're okay. wrapped together. Go ahead. It's because they're all in that corner. It's not that they physically touch. You are absolutely correct. You could do one separate from the other, but um, <coughs> you wanted to, you know, bundle. Uh, bundle is a bad word. The uh, <sighs> the locker rooms the entrances mm -hmm. and that entrance is right then right there right next to the um, the weight room and then you look at the the numbers we have going through there with the power lift <coughs> yep. and that's why it was put on there for the board to consider and then the public I think it I think the weight room needs to stand on its own merits that's that's my opinion and I've heard that from a lot of folks uh, say why is this you know they're reading down this thing and then the last line they have is uh, and, and even on our even on our summary here the last bullet is expand the high school weight room. It, I don't understand why they're connected. Do I think it needs expanded? That's a different issue. I'm not in favor of it being, of it being and I'll use the word, <coughs> bundled or tagged along with the pool because to me it's a so, totally different question. But uh, other than that, I couldn't have said it really better myself because I do think the pool is, I think it's a safety concern. Um, it is highly used. I mean, these are all accurate things. The, uh, I personally, if I were to rack and stack these projects, I'd put it above the energy thing because, no, we don't want to be caught, uh, you know, uh, looking when a boiler fails. But let me just remind you what Matt said about uh, we, on the worst days, we use 80% of one boiler. We have redundancy there. And if something fails, it's not necessarily a boiler, but maybe a valve. Again, not only is there redundancy, but even if you can't get that valve anymore, there's other valves you can get. And that isn't the cost of a whole boiler. So there's... It, it's and, and then when you look at like the uh, the curtain project or the the windows, you know we did have that when we asked Matt to put together a three-year plan. In that was a, a two-phase 
two-phase project to replace those things, each phase costing uh, $200,000. So you're looking at, of this uh, $2.5 million or whatever it is, let uh, me find it here, um, the uh, 2.5 to 3.5 estimated uh, million dollar, and you say those numbers could be lower, uh, project for the energy, you know, we've, we've already talked about working into the budget uh, $200,000 um, uh, in a row for each of two years to replace first the classroom curtains, at, you know, the, the, the wall, and then the cafeteria. So that's why I'm not so worried about the energy, because the redundancy of the boilers, the fact that it's, it's, uh, it's nice to be green, but, you know, we're dealing with so many things here that really need to be done over safety, and I just don't <coughs> think we're going to freeze the kids out of the school when we have triple redundancy, and on the worst days we use 80% of mm -hmm. one boiler. But we're cool. It's a safety thing. Um, the community does use it big time, and um, I mean, it's it's I mean, that's one of the things I've heard since I started running for the school board years ago was uh, the the pool, the pool, and the rest of it. I mean, you guys all all said with the locker room layout. I mean, it's it's it really is. It's it's not it's not an acceptable standard by today's standards by any means. And so I would have no problems going forward with uh, with asking about the pool, with the exception of I think the weight room ought to stand on its own. I mean, either we need it or we don't, and we ought to let people be able to divide that out. Okay, I'm hearing again. Move this one forward. I have some concerns about the pool. Well, it's not the pool. Like you've already stated, several of you, it, all of these things are needed, and if not now, when? You know, that's a question that keeps coming back in my mind. If not now, when are we going to fix these things? And they're, the high school and the middle school are still not completely upgraded like they could be. We have not looked at, I shouldn't say, we've, we've looked at, but we have not addressed in these plans all of our ADA concerns that are out there. There are still issues with these buildings that are not working well. We can make them work but it is not really compliance with some of the Americans with Disabilities Act laws. Um, so, but to slow this project down at this point, I'm not, I'm not willing to do that, to do more study around the whole high school. This has been an issue, it's been on the table. I'm willing to present it to the community. Um, and it is, a, it is a health and safety issue. I would, I think we should look at the weight room. I would really be um, open to looking at that separate, pulling that out. Although just looking at that room to me that's a health and safety issue as well that is way too small in my opinion for for lifting weights and doing you know having a, our teams working in there just our teams alone um but i'm willing to take a look at that again and all you know it makes sense to me just because you're not touching you've got all your construction equipment there why not address that issue now what are you going to do bring all that construction issue again just to explore, expand one room i mean that's my argument for doing it because it makes sense when you've got all the equipment there, it's on that end of the building to bundle that with the pool and get that fixed. It's one more thing we can just cross off our list. And it's not up to us. It is really up to the community. So I'm still very willing to move that piece forward along with the pool plans. And I'm very grateful to everyone that's come tonight to express their opinion on all these things. Because I did the math. I've added up the numbers. Oh, go ahead. Okay. I just did the math. I, we need time. To really think about this yet, it is 26.5 million. If we let everything stand, the range would be 26.5 million to 31.5 for everything together. That's a large number. That would cost our taxpayers between 178 to 211 dollars per hundred thousand. It is a large dollar amount, so we just have to really think about that. Is this our priority right now? Do we want to move these projects? forward I'm open to what all of us how we all really feel about it. we still have time at any point to change this but for right now I'm hearing pretty solid support and I would agree let's move all of these three issues forward and we'll be looking to then pass uh, the um, resolution to just direct administration to further study refine these numbers down get to that lower number to that lower number and go ahead one John. quick um, john to what you brought up about the windows you said they'd only cost about four hundred thousand. Well, that's what matt has on his three-year plan i think that's well oh. i don't think that's i don't think you're looking at it correctly um i see that there's four hundred thousand there yep. however if you look in under question number two item six 
Which which of the, the report we just things got. are you talking about? We're looking at okay. Right replace deteriorating exterior curtain wall as needed at each replace single pane windows. That's one point okay. four to one point six million. So what's the discrepancy then, Matt, between the uh, the uh, two phase plan, fifteen sixteen plan and sixteen seventeen plan on a two hundred thousand dollars a year for that versus the one point four to one point six. Thanks for finding in that, that in that plan, those yep. budget numbers are meant to be kept under the revenue limit. So this those numbers are to work with the school board and if, if you since you're not levying, let's say you levy zero. Well in that plan I have okay, maybe we can do two hundred thousand dollars of window <coughs> this year, two hundred thousand the next year. It's within the operating budget. So what's done in that four hundred thousand dollars versus the one point four to one point six million? Well, what the, the, obviously, the, the larger number is the entire building plus ventilation. The lower number would be to start picking off the walls, <coughs> you know, start in the south wing and just go from yeah, here. I mean, this is just the cafeteria. One part is the mm -hmm. cafeteria, and, and the, the other part is the second floor classrooms. Second floor. Right. Yeah. And, and that's why I was wondering specifically the 1.4, 1.6, what does that cover that, that this doesn't? So it's more than just the uh, exterior uh, replacement of the. Of the yeah, rusting and I couldn't put a 1.6 million dollar in the operating budget, so I'm trying to be sensitive to you know how much we can pick off what we can get each year. Okay, um, where is this going to go after tonight? We will approve the resolution at our next portion of our meeting. Again, you are welcome to <coughs> talk to us if you have any more concerns or questions. Or if you see something we haven't thought about on any of these proposals, we will be moving forward with our resolution that would um, explore and develop proposals for building a new elementary school on the current HCE site, explore and develop proposals for maintenance and energy efficiency projects as outlined in the recent community survey, the ones we talked about tonight. And we would three, explore and develop proposals for improving the Whitnall High School pool, weight room, and locker rooms as outlined in the recent community survey. So we're just directing administration to further develop these, and then these would be brought back in early January, correct? With more numbers, more final plans? Absolutely. Once we have that um, construction manager mm -hmm. on board, right. um, we'll really be drilling down on the scope and the, um, the costs involved with it and look at <coughs> elementary schools that have built or been built that are similar in size, uh, like Lake Mills one came in at 18.7, and that was with the green roofs and all that stuff. So, I mean, are there a lot of options that we as a board can look at and go, make sure this is a need, not a want, and, and it still meets the needs of our <coughs> students? There's going to be tons of opportunities like that. And, the, the, well, you know, we'll be talking later, but there's great options. And all those the, the companies you'll be talking about later are awesome when it comes down to doing that kind of stuff. Right. Yeah, the one the one thing I I uh, I guess I didn't say about the pool and the weight room thing is I, I think the pool I think we made it clear that the pool is important. I don't know that the weight room has the same carries the same weight, so to speak. So my concern about bundling the weight room with the pool is I think the pool stands less of a chance of passing that way, and it's important that it passes. I think it's important that we can, that's why I'm in favor of trying to look at the numbers and see how much of that number is for the weight room and then can that be handled differently when we can uh, deem it affordable rather than attaching it to a large dollar item like the pool that needs to go through referendum. So we would like more of your input on that as well, those of you in the community who may be looking at all these proposals. What do you think? Should we do the weight room or not? There's You guys can talk table. now too, you know. At the um, next meeting you can only speak at the meeting. beginning, which That's we're right. going to do very shortly. But this one you can speak now. I would like to ask that. Is there any final comments before we adjourn this particular meeting? First of all, my colleagues, are you guys good? Okay. I would Leonard, like to say Leonard. that Leonard. when you bring these up, I think you should bring them up as separate referendums to be voted by. Okay. I think you're going to have a better chance of being transparent and showing what each one costs and so forth like that, trying to play the bundle game, because when you do the bundle game, you get a bigger number. And when you get a bigger number, mm -hmm. you're going to look at it and say, okay, and it's going to kind of scare some of these people off, like, what does it all cover? But if you keep them all separate, 
and this is what the cost for this is, and this is what the cost for this is, and stuff like that. They can add those numbers up and, and, and say, okay, but it's a little bit easier to digest it if they're held separately versus trying to bundle everything up and try and put it, you know. That's what we keep hearing. Absolutely. Wrap it around. Wrap it around. Any other final comments? From us? Yes. I think the pool's going to have a much better chance of passing if it's not bundled with the weight room. I would okay. Pull well, the weight room. Up. Okay. Anyone else? Yes. Um, as the as one of the physical education teachers at the high school, my only concern with that is is we run up to four classes at one time. That means we probably have anywhere between 100 and 150 males and females going through that locker room. Um, also with that, with the pool then, we're looking at, I don't know exactly the square footage we're taking away from that wrestling room upstairs, but if we have four classes going on and if we have the fitness center being used, which hasn't been expanded, we take away um, capacity of that, I call it an auxiliary gym upstairs, that's another classroom. And we're also using the new gym and the old gym all at the same time during some of our hours. So I'm just concerned about space and class sizes would be my concern is if we separate them, but I guess that would just, as a teacher here, that would be my concern. We appreciate hearing from you. Anyone else in the audience? I'm not sure, I'm sorry. I'm not Go sure ahead. if I followed her, her train of thought. You mean if we, if we didn't? If we did the pool and we didn't do the fitness center, mm -hmm. We would keep the fitness center the way it is, but we would still have some class sizes at 30 using the auxiliary gym at that time, and we're taking away 10 but, to 15 feet. But right? wait a second. Yeah, but, but you're assuming In though. The upstairs gym. But yeah, upstairs. the weight, the mat, the, the wrestling mat room. room. So, yeah. but you're assuming though that they that the final plans would put in that that wall, and as we yes. briefly discussed upstairs, you know, that doesn't have to necessarily be that way. We haven't decided yeah. on any plan. So, yeah. to I, I certainly appreciate your concern for well, as as a former <laughs> wrestler, you you need a full mat to be able to do things like wrestle offs and that kind of stuff, but. For all the things you use that room for, I could certainly appreciate your concern for losing an extra eight feet or whatever off the side of that room. And there's probably a reason why they had accordion bleachers there up there before, even though the ones that are there are not functional. So, you know, multitasking that that space is not necessarily off the table. Could we have our administration, could we direct them on this one to include some of our teachers and, oh, yeah. and Scott? In that, in this discussion, to take a closer look at that space issue, because I'd hate to see us lose that mat capacity as well. <coughs> the mat, mat, you know, the, the wrestling mat thing. <laughs> Not our Not director mat. 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 <laughs> Not you. Um, could we direct administration just to to maybe look at that option? Because it is uncomfortable for me as well to look at right. cutting just, back that space. And right. I just want to say that the, the existing drawings that are in your Say they're in your plans. Um, we did have a visionary team for the pool project that included all of our swim coaches. It also included all of our wrestling coaches mm -hmm. and PD instructors. Now, this was before you were here. Um, and there was a consensus on the upper space working. That's why we specifically showed the circles in, in that space as to how many wrestling mats we can get to practice. And I understand. We may not be able to fit a full-size wrestling mat in there, but according to what our coaches are telling us, that the design of that space works for what they need it for for practice. Well, and could you go back and make so sure? So we could, we, yeah, I could yeah. help. But and like we've got new staff, right? And, and get them back. See if there's anything more creative we could do to lower that cost, meet those needs. Go ahead. <clears throat> but we're still going to move the weight room discussion forward. We're not saying not to. We're not pulling it out at this point. But certainly, I'd like to see what those costs are separate as well. Absolutely. The only other thought I would add, too, yes. that kind of brought it up is, you know, when we talk about um, the weight room, it's not only used for extracurricular. It is part of our actual curriculum, mm -hmm. um, you know, through our Phi Ed classes. Correct. So, and that is too small of a space in my well, opinion. I don't know. It's, is, it too too, is, it too, is the weight room too small for how you guys use it now during phys ed classes? We have very limited ability in there, yes. Is it because of broken equipment or is it because of the square footage? Both. Because I know you have broken equipment, which obviously money needs to be spent for that. 
Okay, back to the drawing board on that, I think. And let's have some more discussion about what our needs are on that weigh room and uh, the addition. Because this is our opportunity to really put it out to the community if we want to fix it. But I think we need more information. I think the board needs to know a little bit more about that weight room <coughs> and price it out separate. And, and I would like to know more about the options for that upper space. Yes, the option for the upper space as well. Do we, can we find a way to keep a big man up There's there? There's not a reason to have a hard wall. Right. <coughs> we'll see. All right. With that, I think I would entertain a motion. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, number four. The sound system. <laughs> Got a lot of help. Do I have an old one? I sound system. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry. Sound system. Go. Who's up? Who's up for that? <clears throat> Jackie, are you doing it? Is Matt doing the sound system? Um, is Tom doing the sound system? Who's going to take the lead? Well, in your board packet, you had a memo um, from all of us that included some information. Um, basically, very similar story to what we're hearing about the facilities. Um, the auditorium has, is in need of um, some repair, and we have tried over the years to do some things to band-aid it, and um, the sound that you're hearing when you come to concerts or to Tom shows isn't the quality that all of you would like to hear. Um, so we were asked last year to go through the process of collecting some bids. Um, we did that this fall. Um, we're bringing it forward to you tonight, the one that, that we are recommending. Um, it includes the dollar amount, I believe it's 30, yeah, around 37000 That money is in our current budget, um, so it's not you know, money that we're searching for. Um, it's budgeted for, and we're just looking to approve that work. And if we approve it, then we would be able to have that in place for the spring musical. Um, well, the only thing I can add to that is I have been um, working on the auditorium sound system uh, in, in little chunks every year to try to get a fix up a cable that has a buzz in it because the play is you know coming and we don't want the speakers buzzing or you know the left side is too loud or the right side is too loud so it has been it has been one of those annoying problems that just um, we seem to throw money at you know to try to fix components to try to see what wires are bad and um it's just gotten to a point now where we just you know to be continually spending on something that just needs to be fixed um it just seems it seems prudent to, to get it done mm -hmm. i mean the speakers in there are we don't really have a good date but i would predate them to two, 2004. Um, they could be old. basically they're low um Fidelity speakers that are old, they're inadequately placed. Um, with the growing program that we do have, um, it doesn't support the kids' usage. Um, the kids would get much better usage if we could hear them all. We don't even have the capacity to mic all the chorus. Wouldn't it be nice for every kid to be heard instead of the eight leads? Mm -hmm. um, maybe then we don't even have to mic the eight leads. We just hang the mics and we hear everyone equally. And we can't, and just not everyone's getting the full sound. Um, wouldn't it be great to teach the kids how to use a speaker system that integrates with not just the theater classes, but the, the digital arts class, um, Mike Hayden's um, rock band class. There's so many more things that we could do in there that the kids get to use. And right now we're fighting over the, the old infidelity speakers. When we turn one speaker up, the other side goes up. So we can't teach what we're trying to teach with sound because we're combating a system that's not working properly. Thank you. I know this has been discussed for the three years that I've been on the board. And I know that different things have been addressed to try to work with the existing equipment that the system that we have so again I realize that this is a need and I feel that you know tried to work with what we had first before mm -hmm. we did this and it's in the budget so it's in the budget okay any other comments I would agree if it's in the budget moving forward yeah. 
It's okay. in the budget, and this in is the what budget. the experts have come up with. I mean, it's not like we're asking for new money to. Exactly. Let's bundle it. Let's bundle it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> sound system with a weight room. I have to say, I, I do have to say, those performances are outstanding. Thank you. And so I'm very glad to see that you're going to continue to, you know, advance the technology to make those performances even better. But those kids perform, perform outstanding. Thank you. Thanks thank to you. your leadership. Well, thank you for hiring me. And Wonderful. Part of the family. So. Thank you. Thank you. I really okay. It. With that, now I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. Second. Seconded. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Why don't we take a five-minute break? Everybody be back here by five minutes to eight. <laughs>